this one I have absolutely want to do because um, this one's called Dave. My finance professor says you're an absolute idiot. Okay, let's hear that. As, a, as an adjunct finance professor, I have to. I'm dying to see what his answer is to this. So I, I, I honestly know for a fact that you picked that literally based on title. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. His answer, I bet you his answer is, I make more money than you, so I'm better. <laughs> I mean, that might be true. Yeah, well, that's all he's got. Mikey is with us. Get us out of this, Mikey. He's in Indiana. How can we help? Hello. How Hi. are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I'm a junior at Indiana State. I'm amazing at business, social, and mining entrepreneurship. Cool. Good for you. Yeah, I'm, a summary of business. I'm having a hard time understanding this kid. Let's see. Uh, I'm taking a finance class right now that we're you know, learning like real estate and how to manage money. Mm -hmm. But I'm struggling with what my professor is teaching us because it goes against the other three principles that I believe in and learned in financial peace class in high school. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, some of the things that he says is that we should use credit cards for everything. Sure. So you get money back and can't rent a car or hotel or sure. buy airline tickets with a debit card or cash. Yeah. He also said you need to like, do a credit score in order to buy a house. And, then and if you ask him about Dave Ramsey, he'll tell you Dave Ramsey's an absolute idiot. Oh, yeah. Did the professor say that? <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, and then he said we should pay our equity in our house to buy new cars. He also said that payday lenders and okay. credit cards are this if you need to pay for something. So. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So, gosh, wow. This kid is definitely not an A student. <laughs> right, some of that, well, some of that stuff he just spouted there sounds a little off. Well, it's, um, it's, it's not, though, if you're running a business. Okay, if I'm running a business, it makes more sense to do it on credit than it does. I mean, like a person, like an individual person, like you get a 20% credit card, I'm going to sit there and go, yeah, pay it off every month, right? If you're going to do that. Um, or if you're somebody who's not real responsible, you don't feel comfortable with that, I'm going to say maybe you just don't, you just don't get the credit card. Or you get the credit card and you put it in a safety deposit box where you can't get to it. So you have plenty of time to think about it kind of thing. I mean, that's the sort of stuff. But if I'm running a business, right, I can bankrupt the business. And it doesn't affect my personal credit necessarily. Right? Right. Now, if I'm talking about personal credit, then, yeah, I'm going to say you should have some sort of credit going, some sort of credit card or loan or something that you're paying off every month. Right. To build credit, because that's going to lower your interest payments on future loans. So like a home loan or a car loan. Right. Because you're going to establish a credit score, which I know they they're against. But, you know, the idea is that in the future, then you don't have to pay as much. But the idea is that you pay that shit off every month. So you're not paying interest. Right. Of course. Right. So that all makes sense. I don't know about the payday stuff and all this other junk he's talking about. But here's the thing I want to put the professor didn't say anything about Dave Ramsey. And I that's why I thought this was interesting because I could tell you right now, if a kid asked me in class, well, why Dave Ramsey? I'm gonna sit there and go, well, I don't this I disagree with Dave Ramsey. Frankly, none of nothing he frankly, he's not a lot of what he suggests is is recommended academically and nobody quotes him academically. So he's not really Dave Ramsey just said, I bet if you ask him about Dave Ramsey, he's going to say that he's an idiot. And the kid responded, oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't know that the professor said that, though. I'm well, sure that... We paused before we got to what the kid said. Yeah, well, the kid's talking now, so we'll get into that here real quick. Hold on just a second. So here's the oh, thing. Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh, he's a finance professor. Okay? He doesn't have any money. He <laughs> a degree in entree. Ah. One of the things is you, you call that critically <laughs> and how to avoid these situations. Okay. So what do you think the odds are that you're going to change anything he believes or teaches? I would say close to zero. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you think, Ken? Uh, yes. Guaranteed. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that you can do or say or I can do or say that are going to change this guy's misguided, bad teaching and bad <laughs> advice. He's going to continue to do it. Okay. Is that a, okay. you believe that to be true, Mikey? He's going to continue to do it no matter what we do. Agree? Oh, man. Okay, so now you got to decide. Okay. Decide. God. <laughs> so that's what it is. 
I'm rich, so I know what I'm talking about. Listen to me. Yeah, you called it. God, he's got nothing. Here's the deal, too, kids, just so you understand how this. Uh, finance professors make good money teaching, right? But you know where they make most of their money? They get hired by co corporations to do projects, reports. They publish. They get speaking fees. Finance professors make a lot of money doing other stuff. They have other businesses that they own. Most colleges do not right. hire a finance professor who's never worked in the field. Right. Right. This is not like we're teaching philosophy. Right. They want somebody who's been in finance, who's worked in finance, who's run companies. Right. Most, most sections of business, business within universities are hiring various industry professionals to be professors and teach those classes right. because it's not really worth their time and energy to be hiring a bunch of people that don't have industry experience. Right. So your finance professor is not broke. They're nowhere near broke. <laughs> They're probably doing really, really well. Okay. So that's just, I'm just letting you know, it's just, it really also depends on what college you go into, but so that's just bullshit right there where he's just, that's just him being bitter. And the bottom line is he's not accepted academically. He's a joke academically, but no one on this show, I got to remind you every time, has a background in finance. He might have a finance degree in corporate finance from the, what, he got an 80 something, but he doesn't have a background in personal finance. So I don't know what he's talking about. And so his whole thing is just, this is just nonsense. But this is just him being bitter at this point. Your professor doesn't know anything. It's bad teaching. Really? The entire academic community, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of us in the finance field, we're all wrong and Dave is right. That's his argument. <laughs> that does sound like the argument we're hearing here. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love it. Are you going to pass the class or not? Yeah, I have an A in that class. Just, just pass the class and move on. Okay. Because you're not going to change the guy, and you're way too smart to follow what he's saying. You know he's wrong. You've got good critical thinking skills. You've compared his advice to what you've learned from us, and his advice came up short. And you found sure. our stuff to be the truth. My joke always is, is that I learned to borrow money from my finance professor in college who was broke. A finance professor that's broke is like a shop teacher with missing fingers. I've been telling that joke for 25 years, and it still, still gets fun. a laugh. Yeah. yeah, it's still fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's laughing. Nobody laughed at that joke. And furthermore, your finance professor, like I said, isn't broke. Not to mention, they're not going to tell you their personal financial situation anyway. Like, I, he's, he's drawing on a set of assumptions that don't necessarily make sense. He's no. assuming that they're broke, but... A, they're probably not, and B, no professor is going to sit there and like you know give you their bank statements. So, well, I yeah, you need to scrap the idea of whether you think they've got money or not. No, but just to give you an example, like th my three main finance professors, uh, one of them had an outst had a an annual contract with Conoco Phillips where he did research projects for them, which I'm sure he got a god awful fee for. Something ridiculous. Sure. Yeah. Another. Right. Even if you don't know what it is, you can assume it was pretty good. Right. Another one was on the council for the Brazilian airline companies, for the Brazilian, and he helped with their airports. So I'm, and he had to go do that every year. We had to go to Rio and sit through conferences for two weeks, and I'm sure he got paid a ton of money for that, right? And I had a third professor who had a hedge fund where you had to have a minimum of $2 million to even invest in. That he ran a, he ran a local hedge fund and made it, I, you know, and all these guys drove ridiculous cars and, you know, always looked, you know, like a million bucks. So, yeah, but they're all broke, apparently. <laughs> right. That's why they own property in, like, three countries. And it's like, I mean, yeah. People are like, why, why would you want to become a finance professor? There's no money in it. 
and the teaching not that much, but all the other shit. <laughs> all the other stuff that they're doing. Because once you have professor yeah. in front of your name, guess what? Since we talked about supply and demand earlier, demand goes up. So the price goes right. up. <laughs> right. When your financial guru, Dave Ramsey, and it's self-appointed, nobody's hiring Dave to help them with their company or their business. Nobody's offering him a million. He makes all of his money on advertising and selling crap to people. Right. But I tell you about this, so, because we followed him, right? So I followed, so I, I get these all the time on Facebook anymore. And maybe next up, if I could find one, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, so since I, you know, I'm registered as a financial advisor and all that stuff, he keeps sending me these things where they're, uh, they want me to buy the names of people that sign up on his website. Oh. So I can solicit them. So he's, I mean, that's how shady this is. <laughs> So here's a prospect list that you can you can poach my my viewers. <laughs> Funny, because that's exactly but, um, the case here. So to that. Here, here's what's yeah. add to that. <laughs> yeah. He um he also I I think he calls them smart vester pros or some he's got some funny name for it like that. Um that he has certain financial advisors that sort of like pass the Ramsey test, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so not only does he want to sell you that list, he wants to get you to jump through these whatever hoops to make sure that you double back and give his advice. Right. Um, so you pay thousands. So everything gets referred back to him yeah. as well. So you pay thousands of dollars for all this shit. You know, it's like his Peace right, University. Exactly. Those guys don't make much money and he gets to collect the lion's share of that. So he gets he all these. To mention, he doesn't actually pay. He doesn't pay anybody to run them. He gets volunteers to run them, so mm -hmm. that his his coaching program is not staffed. He is not paying to staff it. He's yep. getting it volunteer staffed, and mm -hmm. you know, collecting people's installments on it. You right. Know? Yeah, that's not a financial plan. That's a cult. Everybody, just FYI, in case you didn't know. You're in a cult. If you're not getting paid and somebody else is, you're in a cult. Funny one, Mike. You get this. So my daughter, Denise Ramsey, at the time, she was not married at the time, was taking a personal finance class in college. And the guy not only did everything that you're talking about, but he always spent five to ten minutes every class trashing Dave Ramsey, not realizing his daughter was sitting in the room. Oh, wow, <laughs> And at the and she called me and she's upset and she's angry because she wants to defend me and I said, "Darn it, just pass the class." But at the end of the class, make sure you introduce yourself. And she said, okay. when she introduced herself at the end of the class, she got an A because she answered his questions the way he wanted them answered. It didn't change her opinion. She's never borrowed a dime. Didn't change anything. And then she introduced herself at the end of the class and said, "I've been sitting here for the entire time listening to you trash my father, but I wanted to make sure that you knew I was here and that you gave me an A and I want to thank you for the A." And she said the guy almost threw up. He almost oh, wow. lost it. He almost lost his cookie. I, I don't believe that story at all. That's horseshit. One, it's unprofessional. I don't know. He might have had a reaction because he might have he might have felt a little bit bad that the girl was sitting there listening to him trash I don't, her father. I don't. I don't think he he trashed him all the time. I think probably it came up once, and he just said Dave Ramsey doesn't know what he's talking about. That was probably it. Because it that how unprofessional would that be? We do it on this show because it's funny. But we show evidence in clips of him saying stupid shit like this all the time. Right. You know? So, yeah, that's different. Like, I'm not going to tell my student If my students, well, I like Dave Ramsey. I'm going to tell them, well, let's look at what Dave Ramsey says and let's look at what the alternatives are and see which one's right. right. It doesn't do any good to say, well, that guy's just an idiot. No, teach them. This is why right, he's an right. idiot. They need, they need to learn some skills rather than just like take your opinion for it. Right. Why is the credit thing a better solution? Well, it's a better solution in a business to, to go off of credit and debt and not use your own money. Because if you have to go bankrupt, you don't lose your own money. Right. And they go, well, Dave Ramsey says that's a bad idea. Well, it's like, well, wait a minute. Dave did the same thing. Right. He 
bankrupted his business and he got a $300,000 forgiveness on all his loans and credit. I'll bet you they use credit all the time at the Ramsey Solutions. I bet you they have corporate credit cards and all that shit. They'd be stupid not to. It's too expensive. Right. So anyway, we'll just end with that. But yep, your professors are broke and they don't know anything. It's Worthington's Law all over again, right? If you're rich, you obviously know more. It's not because you just got lucky or you grew up with a, right. oh, in a wealthier family like Dave did. Yeah, brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs>